Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Shallu la ilaha illallah 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 اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على We killed him. 
Like just in case you don't understand who we talking about, we killed him. But they killed him not, as the law says, nor crucified him. But it was so made to appear to them, and those who differ therein are full of doubts with no certain knowledge, but only follow their thun, their con conjecture, for a surety in Allah. Emphasize again, they did not kill him. So, the Muslims are not commemorating Good Friday. Every Friday is Good Friday. Every Friday contains a, a moment during this day wherein if we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala something, He will give it to us. This is every Yawmul Jumu'ah. Not just one Yawmul Jumu'ah throughout the week. And Alhamdulillah, we're not saying this to beat up upon anybody because people have the right to worship as they see fit. Our only job is da'wah, to call them to the truth. And so we don't commemorate anything based upon falsehood. We commemorate that which is based upon yes. Allah, the truth. In fact, we even have a problem with the word Friday. Muslims, we have a problem with the word Friday. Look it up. Friday is named after a uh, few things. Uh, uh, German, Ro Roman, love God. It's from Freya. It's not, they're not hiding this information. It's there. It's clear. As well as with the rest of the days of the week and the months of the year. So we should get into the habit of saying Yawmul Jumu'ah. The day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudi ilis salati min Yawmul Jumu'ah. Fas au ila dhikurillahi wa dhurubayya. Or you who believe when the call is made for Yawmul Jumu'ah, hasten to the remembrance of Allah and leave off all business. That is better for you if you but knew. So, Alhamdulillah, we have to educate ourselves regarding. Things of this nature. So alhamdulillah, don't take this little small piece of information that I gave you and go home and beat up your Christian family members or your friends or your co-workers. It's for you and for you to be God. Because we need it a whole lot more than we think we need it. We need this a lot more than we think we need it. A lot of times we think they need it out there, we need it in here. Because we have the clear proofs, but we don't act in accordance to it. We have the proofs in our hands. We have the clear guidance, but we still act otherwise. They, they don't have it. It hasn't reached their heart yet. They haven't outwardly accepted it yet. That's their excuse. What's our excuse? As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for that year, for inna inna uh dhikr tanfu'ul mu'mineen. And remind, because verily the reminder benefits the believers. Alhamdulillah. Well, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, 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 I want to call your attention in a few minutes that we have left to this idea of Ibadah, worship, Ibadah. And I want to call your attention to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, when we say or think about worship, Ibadah, most of us naturally think of prayer, Salah, Dua, 
Salat, Sadaqa, Hajj, or one of the act, ritual acts of worship. And all of that now is Ibadah. But Ibadah is deeper than that. Worship is deeper than that. And as I speak for the next few minutes, I don't want you to look at other people. I want you to look at yourself. As I'm speaking, I'm looking at myself. فَأَرَعَيْتَ مَنِ اتَّقَدَ إِلَاهَهُ هَوَاهُ وَأَدَلَّهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ إِلْمٍ وَقَتَمَ عَلَىٰ سَمْئِهِمْ وَقَلْبِهِ وَجَعَلَىٰ عَلَىٰ بَصِيرِهِ كِشَاوَةٍ فَمَنْ يَحْدِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اللَّهِ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Jathia That's Surah number 45, verse number 23 so have you seen him who has taken as a God his desires, his hawa? And Allah has let them go astray despite having knowledge and has sealed his hearing and his heart and has put a covering over his sight. Now who will guide him after Allah? Still, do you not take a lesson? Have you not seen him who takes as a God his own desires? How can someone take their desire, their hawa, their passions as a God? Bin Dunillah, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By following them and obeying them. When we have a passion or a desire, and that passion or desire contradicts, goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have laid down, and we adhere to that desire or that passion, we have just acted in the way of worship. We have just worshipped our desire. Because see, part of worship, ibadah, is a ta'a, is, is obedience. Worship is not defined by rituals. Worship is reverence and obedience. Why do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, ati'u Allah, wa ati'u rasul, wa ulil amri minku. O you who believe, obey Allah. The command imperative for Atiyu, obey Allah. Wa Atiyu Rasul. There's no Atiyu, there's no command verb in front of Ulul Amri Minkum. Because number one, those charged with authority among you, Ulul Amri Minkum, is conditional. Conditioned upon them obeying Allah and His Messenger. But also, a ta'a, obedience, absolute obedience is a form of worship. And Allah continues for in tanazatum fi shay'in furuduhu illallahi wa rasul. If you differ in anything among yourselves, you're not going to differ. If you're a believer with Allah and His Messenger, so the differing is with those charged with authority among us. When you differ, you bring it back to, you refer it to, you take it back to the foundation. Allah, Allah, Rasul. Allah and His Messenger. So worship is conditioned by obedience. Obedience is a part of worship. To obey our Allah absolutely is to worship Him. To pick and choose when we obey Allah in His Messenger 
based upon our own whims, our desire, when we feel like it, is to worship our desires. Because our desires command and demand more respect than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that person. Allah says, turn right, I feel like turning left. Guess what? I'm going to turn left. You worship the lust for what thou. Further along in this vein, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, Surah 9, that taqadu ahbaruhum wa ruhbaruhum arbaba min dunillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they are taking their rabbis and their monks as lords. Arba, plural for rab, as lords, bin dunillah, for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, an object of worship. The a beautiful thing about this, in connection with this verse, this is Surah Taubah, verse number 31, there's a beautiful hadith, a beautiful story. When you look in the books of Tafsir, they use a hadith to support their point. You're going to find what I'm telling you there. There was a person in Arab who had became Christian. And He, I'm trying to figure out where to start the story from, don't want to make it too far. See, one thing, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that he was given certain special favors that no other Prophet was given other than him. Many of you are familiar with this hadith. The whole earth has been made a mastery for him. That idea. One of the things that he said was that Allah put fear in the hearts of his enemies for this is of a month's journey. And in this story, you can actually see that manifest. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a couple of Sahaba out to do recon. Reconnaissance. They case the joint. They check it out. See what's going on. Not an army. Not an assassination team. Just some people to look and see what's going on and see what's happening. And the king of this area this Arab, who I mentioned, who I became Muslim. His name is Adi ibn Hatim. Adi heard, saw, and heard about this recon mission and said, oh, those are Muhammad's people. Time to pack up, down the road, leaving. Everybody all over the world talking about the immigration crisis all over the world. He immigrated. Not because the army came, just for some two of the Sahaba come look and see what's going on. He was scared. The army didn't even pack up yet. It wasn't there been any dialogue yet. It was just saying, let's see what they're doing over there. And that was enough for him for the, to be scared. A lot of you can understand that on, uh, on the negative side. Some of you can't, some of you can't. A lot of people, a lot of neighborhoods have the neighborhood bully or the neighborhood stick-up kid who squeeze off first and talk last. He shoot first and then he rob last. He don't say this is a stick-up. He shoot and then say it's a stick-up. And when that reputation grows, you see him coming, you run. Well, he don't even have to say it's a stick-up. You already know what time it is. Well, this is right here. That's on the negative side, on the street level. That even more type of fear, haber, Allah had given towards the enemies of Allah for the Prophet You have to appreciate this. Think of 
about the wars that the Prophet وسلم, and the Muslims had against the Romans. Heraclius. The Prophet وسلم, he went out to Tabuk to fight him. There was no war that took place. You want to know why? Because Heraclius said, I'm not fighting a prophet. In his understanding, he understood the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a prophet. Look it up. There was a caravan coming through. Abu Sufyan was part of that caravan, leading the caravan. You know at the time he was fighting against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was not yet Muslim. At the same time the caravan came through, the letter reached the Roman king Heraclius, inviting him to Islam. And so Heraclius called Abu Sufyan to ask him about this man who claims to be a prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa He asked him a series of questions. And Abu Sufyan himself narrates that I couldn't lie against him. So he told him the truth about his lineage, his claim, you know, his successes. He, he explained all of this to him. Heraclius said to his people, he indicated that maybe perhaps he will accept him as a prophet. And they rejected that, so he just went with the wave. Because he didn't want to give up his leadership. At the time, he was one of the two superpowers. Very hard for people who, who have a lot of power to give up and follow the truth, even when they know it's the truth. Those few people who do are far fewer and in between, in between. A lot of people are quite content living false. I mentioned that whole story with Abu Sufyan in the caravan, him learning about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't accept him. Why did I mention it? Because years later, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam set out to Tabuk to fight him. And he didn't show up. It's like if me and you talking trash, all right, when I see you, I'm, I'm, when I see you, I'll see you when I see you. All right, then we make it time. We talking trash to each other. Meet me on Paulson. It's going to be on when I see you. No talk. All right, no talk. Everybody saw it. I show up. You don't show up. How does it make you look? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came. Heraclius didn't show up. But after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, and the army led by Osama went, then he showed up. You know not to fight the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You can't win. And even if you win, you lose. So, Adi ibn Hatim, the Arab king who had became Christian, he had this fear, this gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he heard about the recon mission, and he left. <laughs> when you leave fast, you don't check to make sure you take everything with you. You just leave. He left his own sister behind him, his own family. She was taken, taken to Medina, treated well, released. She went to Shem, what we know is like Syria, Palestine, Jordan, that area. She went there and invited her father to come to Medina. You know what, you need to come to Medina and accept Al-Islam. You scared, you running for what? You left me behind, anything could have happened to me, but it wasn't even like that. You need to go to Medina, you need to meet the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and you need to take Shahada. That's exactly what he did. I did even had. And when he entered upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had a silver cross on his neck. And the Prophet recited this verse. 
that we just mentioned when he saw them. أَتَكَذُوا أَحْبَارَهُمْ وَرُحْبَارَهُمْ أَرْبَابَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ They worship their rabbis and their monks other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as lords other than Allah. When Adi ibn Hatim heard him say that he said Verily, they didn't worship them. In other words, he's speaking as somebody that's about to be a new Muslim, somebody that's a practicing Christian, and the Prophet وسلم, is telling them that the Jews worship their scholars and the Christians worship their scholars. Other than the lost part of our God. And he's like, oh, no, they ain't worship them. Well, you, got, you got it all wrong. I'm a Christian, I, I should know. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Bala, inna hum haramu alayhim halal, wa ahallu lahum haram, fa taba'uhum, fa thalika ibadatahum, iyahum. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, but rather, they made what was haram, they made what was impermissible, prohibited, they made it halal, permissible. And they took what was permissible and made it impermissible, haram. And they followed them. And by doing such, they worshiped them. So this goes and addresses the point is that when we obey something which runs contrary to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laid down, we are in fact worshiping that thing. So now you can see how some of us worship our own desires, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Because many times, Allah wants us to do something, but we want to do something else, and we follow what we want to do. And we wonder, how can somebody worship their own desires? We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that, and protect us from the open shirk and the hidden shirk, and keep us obedient to him. Imam Naeem Abdullah of Masjid al Mutmin and Nur Zaman Institute is available for speaking engagements. You can contact Imam Naeem Abdullah at the following, via telephone at 267-388-0823. Or write him at 537 Paulson Avenue, Pittsburgh, PA 15206. Or via email at imamnaeem at